Hey, welcome back. It's still Poetry Month, though not for much longer. Today I'm going to be reading a poem by Dante Gabriel Rossetti. Yesterday I read a poem by Dante Alighieri, which was translated by Dante G Gabriel Rossetti. Today I'm actually going to read a Rossetti poem. This was one of his most famous. It's called The Blessed Damozel. The Blessed Damozel. The Blessed Damozel leaned out from the gold bar of heaven. Her eyes were deeper than the depth of waters stilled at even. She had three lilies in her hand, and the stars in her hair were seven. Her robe, ungirt from clasp to hem, no wrought flowers did adorn, but a white rose of Mary's gift for service meekly worn. Her hair that lay along her back was yellow like ripe corn. Her seemed she scarce had been a day, one of God's choristers. The wonder was not quite yet gone from that still look of hers. Albeit to them she left, her day had counted as ten years. To one, it is ten years of years. Yet now, and in this place, surely she leaned o'er me. Her hair fell all about my face. Nothing. The autumn fall of leaves. The whole year sets apace. It was the rampart of God's house that she was standing on, by God built over the sheer depth. The which is space begun, so high that looking downward thence she scarce could see the sun. It lies in heaven across the flood of ether as a bridge, beneath the tides of day and night with flame and darkness ridge, the void, as low as where this earth spins like a fretful midge. Around her, lovers newly met in joy no sorrow claims, spoke evermore among themselves their rapturous new names, and the souls mounting up to God went by her like thin flames. And still she bowed herself and stooped out of the circling charm, until her bosom must have made the bar she leaned on warm, and the lilies lay as if asleep along her bended arm. From the fixed place of heaven she saw time like a pulse shake fierce through all the worlds. Her gaze still strove within the gulf to pierce its path, and now she spoke as when the stars sang in their spheres. The sun was gone now, the curled moon was like a little feather, fluttering far down the gulf, and now she spoke through the still weather. Her voice was like the voice the stars had when they sang together. Ah, sweet, even now in that bird's song strove not her actions, accents there, fain to be hearkened. When those bells possessed the midday air, strove not her steps to reach my side, down all the echoing stair? I wish that he were come to me, for he will come, she said. Have I not prayed in heaven, on earth? Lord, Lord, has he not prayed? Are not two prayers a perfect strength, and shall I feel afraid? When round his head the oriole clings, and he is clothed in white, I'll take his hand and go with him to the deep wells of light, and we'll step down as to a stream and bathe there in God's sight. We too will stand beside that shrine, a colt withheld and trod, whose lamps are stirred continually with prayers sent up to God, and see our old prayers granted melt each other like a little cloud. We too will lie in the shadow of that living mystic tree within those secret growth the dove is sometimes felt to be, while every leaf that his plumes touch saith his name audibly. And I myself will teach to him, I myself lying so, the songs I sing here, which his voice shall pause in, hushed and slow, and find some knowledge at each pause of some new thing to know. Alas, we too, we too, thou sayest, yea, one wast thou to with me, that once of old, but shall God lift to endless unity the soul whose likeness with thy soul was but its love for thee? We too, she said, shall seek the groves where the Lady Mary is, with her five handmaids whose names are five sweet symphonies, Sicily, Gertrude, Magdalene, Margaret, and Rosalie's. Circle-wise they sit, with bound locks and foreheads garlanded, into the fine cloth white like flame, weaving the golden thread, to fashion the birth robes for them who are, are just born, being dead. He shall fear happily and be dumb. Then will I lay his cheek, my cheek to his, and tell about our love, not once abashed or weak. And the dear mother will approve my pride and let me speak. Herself shall bring us hand in hand to him round whom all souls kneel, the clear-ranged unnumbered heads bowed with their orioles. The angels meeting us shall sing to their citherns and citoles. There will I ask of Christ the Lord thus much for him and me, only to live as once on earth with love, 
only to be, as then a while, forever now together, he and I. She gazed and listened, and then said, less sad of speech than mild, all this is when he comes. She ceased. The light thrilled towards her, filled with angels in strong level flight. Her eyes prayed, and she smiled. I saw her smile. But soon their path was vague in distant spheres, and then she cast her arms along the golden barriers, and laid her face between her hands and wept. I heard her tears. This poem envisions a dead woman who is looking down at the man she loves, and there's these wonderful moments when the man sort of inserts himself into this story, as if he's seeing this as a vision, or perhaps only imagining it. In any case, it's delightfully romantic, of course fraught with the kind of imagery that Rossetti is borrowing from Dante's Paradiso, the concept of being reunited in love, in death, and we see that the woman who is in the glory of paradise still can't be happy until her love is with her again. Rossetti has some art that uh, he painted about this particular poem, and I would also say it's fun to compare to one of his sister's poems, Christina Rossetti, who's one of my favorite Victorian poets. Her poem, The Convent Threshold, makes a nice counterpoint to this. It's another poem of separation between two lovers over religious reasons. In any case, a classic. Thanks for watching. You can click to subscribe or to watch another video, and I will see you again tomorrow with another poem as we finish out Poetry Month. See ya. Bye-bye.